This video will discuss the extra approximations and simplifications of restricted Hartree-Fock. So just as we discussed in the video on restricted determinants, for restricted Hartree-Fock we are going to use restricted determinants. So what this means is that for a given spin orbital, chi i, we're going to have that for uh, orbital chi i, that's going to be uh, spatial orbital psi i over 2 alpha if it's an odd i. So for example, chi 1 would be spatial orbital 1 alpha. And if it's even, then it's going to be chi i over 2 beta. So for example, chi 2 would be psi 1 beta. So the electrons starting from chi 1 and going upward would be psi 1 alpha, psi 1 beta, psi 2 alpha, psi 2 beta, etc where, as we noted in that video, the key approximation, the key assumption in RHF is that our ground state Hartree-Fock determinant is going to have a set of spin orbitals where um, anything that is paired together with spins in the same spatial orbital is restricted to be exactly the same spatial orbital, uh, where the spatial orbitals that are occupied are then going to index up from 1 up to n over 2. Uh, typically, this is going to be the case where there is an even number of electrons, though that doesn't necessarily have to be the case, but uh, it works out much better if that is the case and is more common to do so uh, in such a situation. Okay, so if we take our Hartree-Fock equations, where for our canonical orbitals, we have the Fock operator acting on spin orbital chi i is equal to the orbital energy epsilon i times the same spin orbital chi i. Then we can split that into the spatial and spin parts. So the Fock operator acting on psi j sigma equals epsilon j psi j sigma, where we're indicating the sigma as the spin function separately from psi the spatial function. So then if we wanted to just integrate out spin from the Fock operator and have a Fock operator which is spatial only, then we could do the we could do the following type of integration. So we could say that uh, we're going to left multiply then uh, by sigma star and integrate with respect to the spin coordinate for electron one, and that is what we're going to act on. Uh, that's what we're going to use to act on our psi j, act on our spatial orbital instead of our spin orbital. And that's going to give us the orbital energy of that spatial orbital psi j. Okay, so if we note that our Fock operator in terms of the spin orbital or, or the all spin variables uh, is going to be the one electron is going to be the one electron operators, kinetic energy plus nuclear attraction, uh, which only depends on the spatial part. We already showed in the spin integration video that the one electron into the one electron operators don't depend on spin. Plus the two electron operators, which do depend on spin somewhat. We have um, the integral, we have the sum over all the occupied spin orbitals integrated over electron two of chi star c. 1 over r12, uh, 1 minus permutation operator chi c. So uh, what we're going to have here is the Coulomb minus exchange part, where the Coulomb is going to not depend on spin, but the exchange part will, because the two orbitals that we're exchanging have to have the same spin in order for the exchange integral to not end up being zero. Okay, so moving forward then, um, if we have our Fock operator in terms of the spatial orbitals, that's going to be the, the case where our spin or spin variables is going to be already integrated out. The spatial Fock operator acting on psi j is going to be where we integrate, we left multiply by uh, sigma star j and integrate over the spin variable for all of these cases. Okay, so that's that, as I mentioned, is what the Fock operator is in terms of just spatial variables. And that's going to equal the spin integration of the one electron energy, um, which is not going to matter because it's always going to be the same because there's only one orbital of relevance there. And then we're going to add 
um, the integration over over the uh, spin variables there for the Coulomb and exchange part. Um, note that the the exchange part is going to be where we're exchanging uh, the labels of the orbitals there for which one is electron one and which one's electron two. So continuing forward, <clears throat> uh, once we substitute this expansion of one minus the permutation operator, we're going to get a, let's see, chi C x2, sigma j omega 1, psi j r1, plus chi C x1, where we have exchanged electron 1 and electron 2 there, sigma j omega 2, psi j r2. So note the uh, highlighting for which things we have exchanged due to this permutation operator. Okay, so that's going to create a few terms there. And then carrying on as we move forward, so the Fock operator acting on the spatial orbital plus the spin part gives us the one electron uh, operator acting on the spatial orbital, which we easily integrated out, plus now we have the sum over all of the uh, occupied we have the sum over all the occupied orbitals here. So we're going to include uh, the Coulomb and exchange part for the spin up and spin down electrons in each of the occupied spatial orbitals. So as you see the indexing here, it goes to from 1 to n over 2 because we're assuming that each spatial orbital has two electrons inside of it. And for those two electrons that we have inside of that of that spatial orbital, we assume one is spin up and one is spin down. So there we're going to include, uh, for the Coulomb and exchange part, uh, one of these is going to be alpha and one of them is going to be beta. So you can see for electron two there, we have uh, alpha, beta, alpha, beta, and then I believe also alpha, beta, alpha, and beta. Okay, so in three of these terms, you're going to find that when you look through and examine the spin parts, that electron 1 and electron 2 have uh, the same spin in both the complex conjugate and the regular function. And for the fourth case, um, that is not going to be true, and that's where um, in one of these exchange integrals you're going to get a mismatch where for, let's see, electron 2 here, it looks like we're expecting alpha but we're in fact getting beta due to the exchange. So that is to say that the net effect of all of this that we've done up to this point is to say that the Fock operator acting just in terms of spatial coordinates is going to be the one electron operator plus the sum over all of the spatial orbitals, all the occupied spatial orbitals, of two times the Coulomb op operator minus the exchange operator. So it's going to be two times the Coulomb operator because each electron is interacting with both electrons in that spatial orbital and minus one times the exchange operator because it's only going to interact with the electron from those orbitals which is the same spin electron. If it's alpha, it'll be alpha and if it's beta, it'll be beta. The one that has the opposite spin is going to cancel out and go to zero. Okay, so the net effect of this is that our spatial Fock operator is the one electron spatial operator plus sum A equals one to N over two, all the occupied spatial orbitals, integral over electron two, psi star A, two minus exchange op, two minus the permutation operator, R one over R one two, psi A. And so once we take that forward all the way to the energy of our ground state determinant, the expectation value integral of the Hamiltonian operator, what we end up getting is that we get 2 times the sum over all the occupied spatial orbitals, because each of them has two electrons, of the one electron energy of that spatial orbital. Notice it's a spatial integral now because we have the regular parentheses. So two times that, because there are two of the electrons in each spatial orbital of the one electron energy of that spatial orbital, it's kinetic energy plus nuclear attraction, plus su uh, double sum, sum A equals 1 to N over 2, B equals 1 to N over 2, double sum over the occupied spatial orbitals of 2 times the uh, 
Coulomb spatial integral minus one times the uh, exchange spatial integral of the two of those, where one of those exchange integrals has canceled out. So expressing that in an even more uh, concise way, we have two sum from one to n over two of h a, one electron energy of spatial orbital a, plus the double sum of two j a b minus k a b, uh, the double sum of 2 times the Coulomb integral of those interacting orbitals minus 1 exchange integral of those orbitals. And if we want to indicate this for the orbital energies of our particular spatial orbitals, that is then this uh, expectation, spatial expectation value of the spatial Fock operator, which is the spatial 1 electron expectation value plus to the sum over all the occupied uh, spin orbitals of 2 times uh, of interaction of A and B minus the exchange of A and B, or it's the one electron energy of that spatial orbital plus the sum over all the other, uh, sum over all of the occupied spatial orbitals, 2 times JAB minus KAB. Because for each for each uh, orbital of interest, it is interacting uh, twice due to the two electrons in that orbital, minus once with the same spin uh, exchange that it's interacting with. And note also that we don't have to restrict this sum to not include the spatial orbital that the electron is in, because in the case of it being it's summing over the orbital that it's in, let's imagine the electron is in spatial orbital 1 then uh, we'd have 2j11 minus k11. So the electron wants to be repelled from the other, orb, the other electron in that orbital, but that's the only interaction it has. So in fact, the 2 times j11 minus k11, uh, note that j11 is equal to k11, so j and k are equal when the indices are the same. So that's 2 minus 1, which just gives us j11. So in the case of the same spatial orbital that we're in, it's just repelled to with it's just repelled by the other electron there uh, due to its Coulomb interaction because the equality of the Coulomb and exchange interaction cancels out that extra factor of that Coulomb interaction. So these uh, these expressions are now not only more convenient in terms of going over half of the number of orbitals. Uh, and simplifying out spin, but we also don't have to worry, again, as we like to not worry about any restrictions in which terms in the summation we're allowed to do.